did he do when he was working before he retired? He was actually an industrial mechanic. Industrial mechanic. I mean, they really didn't even know what this was, and Carlos says, I'm bringing you in. We're starting Canada. We'll get things going. They're in the parking lot today with a convertible Porsche. <laughs> and uh, his mom was, her mother-in-law was just kind of giddy. I mean, she's just like, can you believe this? I said, we're driving down the road going, we're in a Porsche. <laughs> and I'm like, are you getting driving gloves? You know, we're just laughing. And, and uh, you know, that's what's fun with this thing is real people. And, and uh, you don't have to have the resume that says you're a silver spoon person. I mean, that's, that's what gives me my drive. I, I got a lot of big goals and... You know, I, some of you, it's no secret, you know, I, we're trying to buy a country club right now, and I want to move headquarters to a country club, and people are like, why? Why would you do that? And I'm like, well, I want red carpet day where people come visit us, and uh, they can play golf, or they can sit on the deck and look out over the, the pool, or the women can have pedicures while they're swimming. I want to teach people to dream again. I, I think we've, we're just squashing people's dreams, you know, we're just, uh, this makes me mad and frustrated that uh, here is this bright light burning when you first got started and then you get beat up and someone tells you you're not good enough or you fail at something and then you're thinking the devil has this great way of making you feel like you're the only one that this is happening to. You know, I felt like I was the only one that had a rap party and no one came. Well, that's part of the deal. <laughs> you know, you have so many of them and then someone comes that falls asleep and then tells you the neighbor and then your business explodes. And I, I think we're hope brokers, that we're giving people hope in a tough economy. And we're teaching people to dream. You know, I don't know what's going to happen here. I kind of got a dream in the back of my mind. I don't tell a lot, but I wouldn't mind being an owner of a sports team here. You know, and all of a sudden I'm looking at our numbers this year, and I'm thinking, okay, we'll get the country club going, and we got red carpet day. Right now people come visit at the office, and we go eat at the bistro. Well, bistro shut down now, but, I mean, we'd go. I mean, that wasn't real exciting. I wanted to come, and we'd go, hey, you want to play around golf? You want to just sit by the pool? I sometimes smoke a good cigar. You know, I like to sit out on the deck and and do that out there and now I've got in my head I'm kind of watching what some of the different teams are being sold for and I'm going would that be fun for it works people whatever sport it was that they come and have the suite at the and they get to sit and you know I, I want to teach people to dream and I teach them let them dream again so you know that's getting away from compensation and talking but you know I want you to realize you're not the only ones that have the thoughts you're not the only one that has a great idea, and it's not tweak it, hit it again, tweak it and hit again. Larry, Larry and I have done that a lot of times in the business is, you know, we had to tweak it just a little, and then just a little, and all of a sudden it explodes, and you go, wow, you're a genius. And you're like, <laughs> wow, you know, we really, you know, some of us knew us when we first started. Our goal was to be debt-free. We, we got us debt-free, and a lot of people said don't do that. They said borrow to the hill, you know, and then all of a sudden this economy knocked everybody down, all these companies that had done that, you know, were going bankrupt. Where you know we weren't, we didn't have that pressure on it, so we could keep keep growing in this. Something I came and I run into a lot when um, we meet a, a real good couple. They're interested. They decide to come in. There's that question of should I sponsor my husband? When should we do that? Mm -hmm. Does that spread us out? Can you just kind of talk on yeah. that concept of having two spots in a, in a family? Yeah, you know, at one point, uh, a lot of of the states wouldn't allow that, so we, we couldn't even allow that, but. Here's the only thing with that. Um, I've got people at two spots, and you know they're making generations on one, or and you know one might be. What I see with some of the top leaders is some could be making a lot of money, and that still brings in a little bit. Um, here's the only problem with that. If everyone, let me grab a this eraser here. If everyone did that, here's what would happen. And if you're in a team and you're promoting that, what's going to happen is, okay, here's you again. You sponsor a good person. They've got their 10, uh, you know, just average their 10 loyal customers. They've got, they're on auto ship. They've sponsored someone that's done the same thing, done the same thing. They're building their business. It goes down six levels to that 2% infinity. If you start teaching, you, and you get another spot, this is your spouse, but you're building everything under this person, and then you teach that here, and they're sponsoring their spouse and building everything under this, in two to three people, you're out of the unit level. You're really stretching the comp plan, and you're making it in half, especially if all these people are doing is a spouse is just qualifying and not building it. 
So they're not adding new people, where this one's adding legs and, and adding people, and this one's adding legs. And Mark, going to diamond. Our, our policy says that we have to have a spouse sponsor if you are under that under an existing spouse. Right? Mm -hmm. it, it is. You so can't cross again? recruit right so yet. A spouse, if you have a spouse, then they have to be under the other spouse. Yep. You cannot. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's another level. This this is I'm telling you why I wouldn't build with that as a strategy to stretch out the the comp plan. You're actually going to lose money out of that if everybody was doing that. Uh, what Chris is talking about is if you do do it, you have to come under the same spouse in that household, and that's because of cross recruiting. That is, you know, you say today, well, I'm not really enjoying where I'm at. I'd rather be over rusty over here and so you bring your spouse over there that's that's oh, another I go. Okay. Oh, so that yeah. one is you know just ethics and this one is just if uh you know if everyone was doing it you're stretching out the comp plan where you're going to make half of all the money what makes sense to me is to maybe build the diamond first and then sponsor your husband mm -hmm. so now he's that coding leg he's that generational or whatever mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. then you build him if if all the spots were truly building it would make sense. What happens is some people will just do that to leverage another. So, you know, you think about it, instead of putting your loyal customer here where you're making 15, you put it under your wife, so now you're making 25%. But again, if everybody does that, instead of a six level plan, you really only have three levels because you got a lot of dead spots where they're just putting in people. So if you were building as Nathan was saying, you'd be okay. Just be careful of that because you are stretching it. Yes, sir. What happens if you don't have a spouse now, but later on you get a spouse? Uh, and she wants to really work. That's good. You know, it's a great way to recruit. Get a new spouse every other month. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> and if you've already built a thing yeah. across, yep. four or five years down the line, you get married. Yep. What happens to that spouse if you want to recruit? Yeah. Because that's an illegal move to put her over there. Yeah. No, that... You know, and that's not a bad thing. You might be triple diamond by then, so you're helping her build a spot, and you're getting all the coding on that too. I don't, I don't see any problem with that. No. Let's, let's, uh, we'll stop me up here formal, but you know, if you've got questions, you, you guys have such an advantage here that you've got a lot of leaders that are making great money. We got a young that a lot of us haven't been through this before. You know, and that's exciting too. You, you know, you take Nathan and Chris and them; they're having some great success and really new to the industry, and. Um, that just shows to me, it's like the four minute mile. Once somebody busted it, all of a sudden, you know, it took years and years and years for someone to do it. And then once they did it, then the next week, like, people started doing it. So, you know, you guys know it's doable just with the people in here on a lot of different levels. Dave, Dave's is a great story. You know, I did, they're a great couple, Dave and, and Debbie. And, and uh, you know, he was put his heart and soul in his own business and was getting squeezed on that, just economy and timing. Nothing he did wrong. And yet, I'm sure, Dave, in your own story, you're internalizing it and thinking, "Why me? What did I do wrong? I got a boy. You got great kids, great family, and he's wanting to provide. He's a good business guy, and yet he was getting caught at bad timing all these years in the same one. I watched my dad preach, GM, GM, GM. I'd say, Dad, I don't want to work 30 some years for the same company. He goes, Well, you always have great benefits. You always, you know, last January they took away all his benefits. And Dad's in his late 70s. Then they started taking away the money. And then his stock went, he always said, I'm just buying GM because they're solid. You know, I'm not picking on GM right now, but that plan's not working. And yet, you know, what's dad going to do? Plan B? Late 70s, he's going to go back to college? I mean, I, you know, he, don't, he didn't want to plan B. And, you know, Dave didn't want to go 20 years working or however how many years this company and then go, wow, that was the wrong one. And yet, it's great for me to see with this business, the vehicle, they started as a family. They had to do some things they didn't want to do. You know, plan A was get some studs right away, they make a lot of money for them and you're done. You know, plan B is it might take a little longer, plan C would be never, but they came and tweaked and tweaked. They went to work, do some other stuff at the same time, build time, go, and now they're both full time and, you know, I admire that. Um, you know, they got it and they got where they wanted to go. And just like a, you know, an airplane doesn't go in a straight line, it, it keeps readjusting. You know, they had to readjust a few things, but, you know, those are the kind of families that I'm excited uh, that we're all working together and changing lives, you know, and years from now we're sitting on our boat and writing our story We're going to have some good chapters to it. The office. The office. <laughs> That's right. That's the name of my, my boat right now. Don't tell anyone at the office though, because when they call I tell my office. <laughs>
All right, we'll, well we, stop then. And yeah, we thank you for coming in, Mark. We appreciate you coming in.